like this this sad reminder that Wizards killed killed Modern with Eldrazi Winter for. You're still showing us hosting. That's a Tony V. That's a Twitch thing. It's really kind of an annoying thing. If I open my browser, I'm no longer hosting. That's not something I have control over. So that's on your end or Twitch's. Try refreshing the page if it still shows us hosting. Although if it shows me as hosting, they're probably not hearing me say the things I'm saying. This is, you know, what the Amulet Titan deck does sometimes. It's, uh, it's got, it's got some easy mulligans. Um, our standard player won like two games of magic. I went four and three. Matt went, uh, Matt went seven and zero. Oh, so we went four and three all together because, well, that's how the cookie crumbles. I mean, I get, I guess I'm keeping this. This is one of the issues this deck has on occasion, and this is this is an issue that like elves and like you see it some of these other decks have at some points. Um, the way the way the bounce lands work and lands like Vesuva, this archetype what I've played in the past, it definitely feels like it has both ends of the issue where sometimes it feels like it has too many lands, but also simultaneously having games where it feels like it doesn't have enough lands. So we'll see how this goes. I'm interested to see how the Hive Minds and the Lotus Blooms play out. I haven't played an Amulet Titan list with Hive Minds since Summer Bloom was banned, and I've never played with Lotus Blooms. So I'm interested to see how those cards do. I think I think we're just gonna die here. I think I think um Matt and our our teammate Jeremy made a really bad decision for standard. Um they ended up what did they end up playing? They ended up playing um Red Black Chain Whirler, which just like our, our teammate played against Mono Red four times, and the Mono Red matchup just looked super abysmal. So, like, he just got completely dumpstered by that matchup again and again and again. I think we're on the zero outer, right? Pretty sure my Ghost Quarter only exists on the sideboard, but we'll cast this card to find out. Good stuff, good stuff. I think we should have played Mono, mono Red ourselves, or maybe Blue Black. I don't know. I didn't... I don't have a lot of experience with standard. I haven't practiced standard. So like, I was just like, you guys have both thought about standard. I'm just gonna trust you to do, do what you're gonna do. And I think, I think they came to bad conclusions. I don't know if I would have come to better conclusions with, I don't, I, I don't know that I would have come to better conclusions with the same information, but I definitely think that where they ended up at was not ideal. So I don't I don't blame them for what they did. I don't know that I could have done better, but I do think that the end result was that their deck choice, the deck choice that they ended up having was very subpar for the tournament. All right. Anyways, what are you doing here? Pact of Negation comes out. I'm pretty sure Hive Mind is supposed to come out in this matchup just because with Springleaf Drums and Mox Opals, my opponent can pay for packs a lot of the time. Do you prefer Amulet Titan or Titan Breach? Well, Titan Breach is quite possibly one of the most boring linear decks that modern has to offer in my opinion and i hate playing it with a passion and i find it very boring to play um that that being said uh valica titan is probably probably a better a better deck than this one in terms of like consistency and power level but this deck is far more interesting to play I'm actually looking at this mana base right now, and I don't I don't play decks like this enough to adjust them, but no Cavern of Souls in this mana base. That has to be an oversight, right? I feel like one has to be pretty free with your Teleria West. At any rate, what am I? Um, details on how the deck queue works is here. Shaka. Um, mm, click that link and find out all the details. I basically just play the things that come up in the queue, but the Tracker Jund is, is a deck that I would definitely play again if someone submitted it. Deck felt very reasonable. I'm pretty confident I want, want all of these cards. Um, I trim these Serum Visions on the logic that they're probably a little bit slow and clunky. I think I'm supposed to cut a land since I'm boarding in Ghost Quarter. 
But I'm not 100% on what land I'm supposed to cut. I need to just, like, make some decisions here really quick. Um, uh, and I'm going to submit 61. Oh, yeah, Colony Garden seems like an okay cut. We don't have... It doesn't actually block that many things. Actually block that many things. Hornet Queen is expensive. That is a true statement. It's also just very good in the matchup. I think I like cutting Colony Garden. Colony Garden doesn't block anything meaningful in this matchup. All their stuff flies. Yeah, I get that Hive Mind kind of helps your control matchup, but like w playing one copy of Cavern of Souls is like having 12 copy of Cavern of Souls in this deck, which I think makes it kind of nonsense to not play at least one. Like I know some of these lists play multiple on occasion, but I think I think even if you think your control matchup is that much better with some Hive Minds, I would still like like one copy is pretty low opportunity cost basically. So if we if we get a game three here, we'll cut the colony garden and go down to a reasonable number of magic cards in our deck. Yeah, the Lotus Blooms are interesting. I agree. I've never played this archetype with Lotus Bloom before. Yeah, I think I think people get caught up in their own technology sometimes. We'll see. We'll see how we'll see if we regret if we play against them and if we regret not having a Cavern of Souls. Like I said, just not playing Cavern Souls is just like in this archetype, especially with all the tools that you have, it feels like including one Cavern of Souls is like a low cost for a very high potential upside, essentially. Well, I also just submitted 61 cards, so there should just not be a Colony Garden in my deck. I was running out of time to, to finish sideboarding. Do I just play a bounce land and shoot their pest and their steel overseer here? I might do that. Let's see what we draw. It like uses like I have to return the land to my hand, so it like uses my land drop up, but I'm pretty sure I just want to trade this for these two. It's gonna put us a few turns behind here. Like, it's gonna take so much of their pressure off the table. Ginger cakes. Don't let your memes be dreams. My LGS slogan. Thank you. Thanks for the 11 month resubscription, Ginger cakes. I appreciate it. Welcome back. Stack my untap trigger. Float my mana. Bounce this. So, this is gonna slow down our development a little bit here, but I feel like. The amount I'm trading here is like slowing them down more than it's gonna slow me down, so I think this is worth it. Like a land drop and a ballista for their two things here. Shannon with the 19 months. Thank you very much and welcome back. I appreciate it. Hope everyone had a good weekend. Thanks for the resub. Sorry I wasn't on. I was in Chicago over the weekend and then I decided to take yesterday off when I got home. A hey, tracks, welcome folks from well that. On the list of draws that we had in our deck there, chat, I think I think that one was towards the top. Oh, another another amulet. I don't don't mind if it does. Alright, so the key to playing out Azusa here is that you want your first land drop after her to not have a trigger, because if my opponent had a Galvanic Blast and I played one of these, they'd be able to blast her before I get my second extra land drop in for the turn. So by leading on the gemstone mine, I get to guarantee, get to play two extra lands off Azusa. Thanks, Nazar. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Play well, get rewarded. So exa exactly like that. So if I would have led on the Simic Growth Chamber, my opponent would have killed her in response to the triggers here, like just happened. But instead, because I led on the gemstone mine, I was able to get both my extra land drops off of her. It's so like really a little, little small thing that you can do, you can do to get some extra percentage points. Playtime is ogre. I feel like you're right that we've lost a lot of meme value. What's going on, Trax? Welcome. All right, so they should be particularly dead here, right? Do I have enough? I don't know that I have enough mana to double Titan. 
I might have enough mana to double Titan. So we're going to draw this other amulet. If I would have kept this, we would have definitely had enough to double Titan. So I cast, I'm definitely casting this. I'm going to count for the people at home that are slow like I am. So this makes four. And then we have five, six, seven, eight. Ayo, Nazar. Thank you for the 500 bits. I appreciate that. Thanks for the cheer. So we have four, five, six, seven, eight mana. And this Titan would go get a Bounce Land plus a Teleria West. Which, a hey, tracks. Thanks for the, the rainbow bit bomb. And then... So this would go get Teleria West and a Bounce Land, which would make a total of six mana and then return the Teleria West to my hand. So I am, I am currently one mana short of being able to play Titan, get, get Bounce Land, Teleria West, and, and do another one. Yeah, so we're one off the second Titan. Which is fine. I just wanted to, I just wanted, that's like, that's how you count out that math at home for people that haven't necessarily played this deck before. So I just wanted to, just wanted to walk, walk through, walk through that. Oh yeah, we got to play around the moto bug, right? I'm just like assuming that that's still bugged. So this is, yeah. So Magic Online, for the sake of making things faster, um... The auto stacking is bugged with double titan, so if you want to actually play optimally, you can't currently. Or you have to stack your triggers funky in order to play optimally, so... I can't actually kill them this turn, right? Because they're going to have to chump block. They get to chump block, I can only deal 20 this turn. Because I can go get... Boros Garrison plus Slayer Stronghold here. So the key to stacking these is you want to put these Slayer Stronghold untaps on the... So here's the thing. Normally, you just want to click this Boros Garrison trigger and then stack these on top. But the problem is if I click this Boros Garrison trigger... Moto auto stacks all four of these amulet triggers and sometimes it stacks them in the wrong way So what you want to do is you want it so your slayer stronghold untaps are on Oh good now now it's not lighting up so I can't know which ones which ones go to which just just quality fucking software man I hope that's the right is this the oh look I did I guessed right okay so you want the slayer stronghold untaps to come after after the Boros Garrison untaps, because what what happens is if you don't do your Boros Garrison untaps first, you don't get a chance to float mana. And like now, I actually have to return the wrong land to my hand because like ideally, God bless Zach. God bless. Thanks for the bits. Congrats on your finish and happy birthday, by the way. I saw that. I saw that on the facey spaces that it is your birthday. So happy birthday and congrats and condolences on your weekend. So technically, we'd like to bounce the Slayer Stronghold to our hand, but because we had to do Moto Fuckery, that's not an option. So we're gonna go ahead and return Selesnia Sanctuary to our hand, and now we'll untap my Slayer Stronghold. We'll diddle my Primeval Titan once. We'll untap my Slayer Stronghold. We'll diddle my Primeval Titan again. So... I already played my land for the turn, right? Yeah. So what am, what am I doing here? I just get the the Vesuva Sun Home here, right? Pretty pretty low chance of dying next turn. Cuz getting getting Vesuva Sun Home allows me to force them to block. And this this one doesn't actually matter. So and this is a good game. So like I clicked on this and now it's stacked these so the Sun Home is untapping first. Yeah, I think 
I think getting these is correct because getting the Sun Home is basically like a removal spell for the Steel Overseer here. Although I guess I'm kind of playing with fire, leaving myself open to Ink Moth, huh? Apology. Thanks for the three month three subscription. A quarter of a year. Welcome back. I appreciate the continued support. So they got a jump block with this. No, F7 just auto stacks. Is it a, t I don't, I'm pretty sure it's not a toggle. I'm pretty sure it's not a toggle. I haven't actually looked. Maybe I'll look. I mean, it'll be, it'll be on YouTube later spawn. I pro I promise it will be on the YouTubes later. Don't, don't go land Ravager kill me. All right. So I'm going to cut this colony garden. Is there anything in my sideboard that should be in my main that should be in my deck right now? We ran out of time while sideboarding last game. What? Okay, so like again, chat, be be constructive, be specific. Azusa is better than what? I get that the Azusa the Azusa was a very good draw that game. So like what do I what do I cut? Sideboarding is a one-to-one -one process. It's like I I agree that this is probably an okay card, but I don't have any idea what we're supposed to trim. I feel like everything else we have in here is like a core, a core deck piece. I don't know. I guess the dismembers are costly. Maybe two is too many. Yeah, but like, what am I cutting again? Like all of these lands have a, have a purpose. They do, they do stuff. Kozilek's return is fucking great. We're not, we're not cutting Kozilek's return. I would buy the crumbling vestige can be cut. I would buy that for a dollar. Mora Sith with the sub, the sub gift. I think I, I think I'd buy that two dismembers is too many. And I never want to cast that card twice in this matchup. Hey, Lethal. Usually watch on YouTube. Here's my monthly check. And well, thanks for the five months. I'm glad you enjoy the YouTube stuff. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you for the continued support. Thanks for helping, helping keep me employed. I think this deck is fine. I think it's one of the many tier two linear decks. This deck's not even that linear. It's one of the many tier two combo decks in the format that's like generates interesting gameplay and is powerful in different ways. Was good against surgical, which raised some questions. All right, so this hand doesn't do anything, right? Yeah, I, it feels weird mulliganing a hand that has turn one Lotus Bloom, because like normally if you put Lotus Bloom in your deck, your deck's got to be absurd with. Li I'm on the draw, and I, I have a scry. I'm on, I'm on the draw, and I have, this hand just has, like, all the fucked things in it, right? Just. I. Look, chat, what you need to accept in your heart of hearts is that magic is gambling and that you're gonna have to keep some hands that look like this and run a little bit hot on occasion Ma magic is gambling and anybody who tells you otherwise is lying it's fun gambling is fun but it is gambling so let's 
Let's roll some dice. All right, there's gonna be a bounce land on top of our deck and everything is gonna come up Millhouse. Everything is gonna come up Mill. You'll never lose because you mulligan to five if you never mulligan to five. That is definitely correct. It's just That's just a factual statement, chat. No fake news here, just, just all, all truth. All right, green source, please. Green source, please. Gosh, we're so, we're so unlucky, chat. Just the gosh darned unluckiest. Packed for a forest. There's, there's the real MVP, packed for the forest. God bless Twitch chat. God bless you. All right, this comes in next turn. So we got two shots to the bounce lands here. One last shot. It's the chance to roll. Opportunity comes once in a lifetime. You better move yourself with the music the moment you will. Bet you never, ever let it go. Only get one shot tonight. It's the chance to roll. All right, what am I doing? What what are we doing? It's definitely, it's definitely Boros Garrison, right? It's definitely, definitely Boros Garrison. Is it? Why isn't it Boros Garrison? I guess I get the Temple of Mystery. And then if you get Garrison, you can't haste it. Don't I have Vesuva for explicitly that reason? Don't I? Don't I have Vesuva for... I have a Lotus Bloom on Suspend, chat. So this is three green, this is a fourth green. And then like I'm gonna attack them with two Titans. I'm pretty I'm pretty sure it's Garrison here. I get that it's much worse than a green one, but I'm pretty pretty sure we're supposed to take Garrison. I am by no means an Amulet Titan expert, but I've logged like, I don't know, probably 50 or 60 matches with this deck at this point. I actually played this deck uh, at a States tournament one time before, back before Summer Bloom was banned. Yes, yeah, assuming zero interaction, they should be particularly dead here. Oh, fuck me, seriously? Seriously, it's Galv Blast, Galv Blast. I hate everything about everything. Ugh. Oh, God, chat. Just. Is there. Is there anything that summarizes modern better than dying with lethal in hand to exact seas on their turn? I feel like. Feel like that's the true embodiment of many of the decks in this format. Just like rats, I was gonna kill you on my turn. Why did you kill me on your turn, opponent? No, that was their I missed a land drop, right? So that was that was their turn four. That was a turn four kill. That was fair and balanced, chat. Turn four lethal. Good, good honest things. That was turn four lethal. We have five trophies. How sometimes I run good with shitty decks. I mean, I mean, we only play the most competitive of decks on this channel. This is this is a try hard get every percentage point stream, right? Never missed him. How'd JAC go over the weekend? I had a lot of fun playing Jeskai Ascendancy combo in paper. The look of of dejection and rejection and acceptance on your opponent's face is really something you just can't experience over the internet. 
And when you when you do it in paper while they sit there watching you fiddle with your birds of paradise and your dice everywhere, it's it's therapeutic in a way. It's therapeutic in a way. I had a game one against humans where I needed one I needed to hit a non-creature spell in my in my sleight of hand after I'd been comboing for like three minutes and I bricked and died. But I ended up winning games two and three in that match, so it wasn't too big of a deal. I think this is a keep. It's just pretty good with a bounce land, right? Look at that. Christmas come, Christmas come early, chat. Christmas come early. I'd keep and then get salty when I die. Uh, I went four and three in the tournament. I got very unlucky against Tron. I punted against Affinity, and uh, the Jeskai Ascendancy deck basically never beats Grixis Shadow. So those are my my three losses. I did beat Burn in Humans, though. Humans is a is a close matchup. I think we might actually be a little bit ahead against Humans. You're a dog to Burn, though, so it was nice to beat Burn. It, so it was funny, the the person who handed me the deck I was borrowing was my round one opponent playing Tron. I think I haven't played this deck enough with either of those cards to have an educated or informed opinion on either of them. So far, the only game I've suspended a Lotus Bloom on one, I died before it, it unsuspended, which is like, that's kind of a knock against, against Lotus Bloom, in my opinion, because like, Modern's a format where you frequently die on their turn four, so, um, you did send bits for a dealer's choice. I will make sure to put those in the queue. It was like 1100, right? Pretty sure I get that, get that added. So like modern is a where you like frequently die on turn four. And I feel like making your deck better at turn fouring as opposed to like, I feel like the point of playing decks like this is to kill people on like two and three on occasion and like be really aggressive. So like making your deck slower and more consistent doesn't feel like what you generally want to be doing in modern. But again, I haven't played with it. So we're going to, we're going to see if that's what my gut feeling match is. I don't know what I want to do here. <sighs> Playing the Simic Growth Chamber out into the Field of Ruin sucks. Getting my Azusa Mana Leaked sucks. I guess we just do this to start. Yeah, like I said, I was interested. I was interested to try to try this configuration because it is it is different. I mean, my Azusa would have gotten mana leaked here. Do I just play this Vesuva as opposed to getting Growth Chamber? I think I just play the Vesuva here. Mono green Tron deck of my choice. 10 out of 10, Drowning Cow Live. Thank you for the bits. I appreciate it. Sunken Hollow. Okay, so like probably straight blue black. I, I guess I play the Simic Growth Chamber now and play 
Play Azusa. Yeah, five five mana doesn't really accomplish anything. And like, they're gonna mana leak this, and next turn they're gonna field our sunken our growth chamber and like field us back to the stone age. Vesuva as Kenta, that sounds okay. That sounds okay. I just play what the people pay me to play, Aaron. I'm a I'm a I'm a simple shill who does as he's paid to do. Sunken Hollow with Mana Leaks as fairies. Maybe I don't know that fairies has room to play Field of Rune in their deck necessarily, because usually they want to be playing Mutavault too. We are just getting picked apart. Yeah, there's always there's always some good stuff in there. If you ever if you ever like, I don't know, I don't have a sweet modern deck to play. Dick dipping into the queue and like looking what other people have said did is always kind of a hoot. Interesting choice of basics. That's fine. That's fine. I didn't I didn't like my spells anyways. Jokes jokes on you, opponent. These these spells weren't very good to begin with. I I I I do 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 Good news. Opponent doesn't have any pressure in play. Maybe I'm just supposed to play this explosive's out for two. Because they probably don't have anything much better than a Snapcaster Mage. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. And I'll play this so we can play around Mana Leak. A Vesuva Copy Tar Pit. That is. Certainly a legal play. I don't know about good, but it's definitely legal. It's a a play a play that I could make that would not that would not result in a GRV in a paper tournament. Do you know how long we had to wait to get fast lands? All ten fast lands. Like you're gonna don't don't hold your breath. Waiting for five more battle lands. It's not, it won't be good for your health. Don't, don't do it. Don't do it. How many hits do I take from this before I pop this? Probably like two to three more. Yeah, Jeskai Ascendancy combos the nut. There's some idiot that always plays it on Twitch. It's great. You've you've come to the right. This is certainly the correct place to land on Twitch if you're looking for some combo decks in modern. Definitely, definitely a thing that we do here. Smells a little cryptic opponent. The fact that they're cryptic commanding this Azusa while we have 1,200 a logic knot. Sure. Guess I should have played my land first. I went four and three. Matt went seven and zero. Oh, our standard player. I think he won a match. I think he won a match. He got some. He got some really bad matchups. Of course, there's free timeouts. We don't. We don't get rid of the free. Life's all about the freebies. Get in here, free timeouts. Ooh, ooh! I found a piece of candy, chat. I found a piece of candy. I found a piece of candy. All right, so I need the Slayer Stronghold in place so I can attack them this turn, right? I mean, I have this Pact of Negation. This Pact of Negation and I are good friends. We go way back.
I'm gonna let this resolve just in case they have like another two mana counter in their hand. I'd much rather they do this. So I'm gonna use my no button on here. We played we played the wrong chain whirler deck was the issue. The pro the problem was we played the wrong chain whirler deck. That was that was the problem. Get west plus green red bounce land. Yeah, that's a good line. I like that because we can make white off of this, right? So I'll pick this up, put stronghold into play, target, target my boy here. Yeah, yeah, like if we had a cavern, this dude would like go get the shit out of a cavern of souls right now, right? Oh good. Never mind. Don't even didn't even need the cavern. They just concede. God bless. God bless us, everyone. Um Green Sky. Glad you got it all sorted. Thank you for the two month three subscription. I appreciate you jumping through the hoops you had to jump through. Thanks for the continued support. Welcome back. Welcome everyone. Happy Monday. Hope everyone had a great weekend. Hanging out, playing some modern. All right. So, is this a swan song, Matt? It's, it's, I feel like swan song's not supposed to come in against control decks. Is that is that accurate? Is that a, is that a correct statement? People, people who are smarter than I am, this is not a swan song matchup, right? I feel like Swan Song is for the other fast combo decks that exist in the format. I feel like Control is going to probably beat me to death with the bird token. This is probably not an Engineered Explosives matchup, right? This is a Baloth Hornet Queen matchup. I, I agree with that. Just like increase threat density. What am I trimming? Can I cut... Can I cut all of the explosives? Radiant Fountain is definitely an easy cut. Going down to 27 lands is not unreasonable. Is the Vestige better than a Ghost Quarter? I feel like the Vestige is probably worse than a Ghost Quarter, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna swap that. Keep an explosives, cut an Azusa. I think I think that's fair. I feel like there's a non-zero chance my opponent has like damping sphere in the board or something like that. I don't think Azusa is necessary. Azusa is our best card when we're racing, but I don't think Azusa is necessarily our best card against a control deck. And Lotus Bloom is good at jumping our mana up in this build, so I feel like Azusa is less important against a control deck in this configuration of Amulet Titan. Yeah, I feel I feel like the the engineered explosives is like low opportunity cost high upside inclusion. Now I think I'd rather just have a way to tutor for it. I think bringing in a narrow card like Grudge is bad, but I think having a generic card like engineered explosives is fine. Remember, if you want to tell me how to sideboard, I appreciate it, but I need I need the whys. I need. I need you to say you need to bring in X because and you should cut Y because. Yeah, I've played I've played this archetype before stop. I've actually played both sides of this matchup. I played Cryptic Command decks against this archetype a good deal. <sighs> Is this fine? I feel like I want to keep this just because they're a thought seized deck. I'm going to keep this because they're a Thoughtseize deck. It's not good, but like mulliganing hands that are just going to like get to play their lands against a Thoughtseize deck is bad, I think. I think I just want to like hit my land drops and be able to cast my six drops off the top after they play the disruption. No, but Summoner's Pact is a six drop. It only gets Titans. Why would you, why do you get to take my six drop with your Inquisition opponent? That's not fair. That's not fair. 
The fact that they Inquisition Notes does mean I get to play my Bounce Land here, which is nice. Uh, there isn't a Cavern of Souls in our deck. So, again, that's one of the one of the things I mentioned earlier, is that whoever built this decided Cavern of Souls wasn't worth playing, which is an interesting decision not to play one. We haven't actually seen any fairies out of our opponent yet. I think there's a very good chance they're just playing blue-black control. There's a very good chance they're just on blue black control. I think, I mean, like I said, I mentioned this earlier to you for people are just joining us. I think playing one cavern has a very low opportunity cost and a very high upside. I think against control decks that are going to have consistent access to things like Abrupt Decay or Coligan's Commander Shatter Effects, boarding out amulets is great. I think against my opponent playing blue-black control, who doesn't have access to shatter effects, it's fine to leave my amulets in. I think I want these. I think I want these, I guess. No point in really playing a scry land. Glad you're joining the content, Axel. Thanks for the support. I am really surprised they didn't field me. They, like, have to have Cryptic Command here, right? No, when I want to set money on fire needlessly, I just let Declan buy whatever choice he wants to get, rather than, rather than go to a Magic Grand Prix. This configuration of Amulet Titan is playing Lotus Bloom instead of Sakura Tribe Scout. So that's the that's the difference. Which for the for those of you that aren't parents or aren't aren't lovers of Power Ranger toys, um, they're kind of expensive. So Zords are not cheap. We got we got Declan like this two this two foot tall Megazord for his birthday that he really wanted. It was like almost a hundred bucks. There was nothing good on Twitch. Yeah, I took the weekend off. I was in. I was in Chicago Friday night and all day Saturday, and then I got home yesterday afternoon, and I was like, I'm just gonna play the Hex Bash rather than stream. So I did. I did some writing and played the Hex Bash. Hey, Daft Man, thank you very much for the Twitch Prime support. I do appreciate that. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thanks for keeping me employed. I have no idea the reasoning to make this change. My my educated guess would be that the goal is to make the deck more consistent on turn four by having more extra mana on turn four and being a little bit better against like the spot removal that can kill Sakura Tribe Scout. 
but I definitely don't have enough experience to know if that's a good change. You're not legally allowed days off anymore. Well, my opponent tanks here for a second. I'm going to go crack my window and get some fresh air in my basement. It's only supposed to be like a high of 80 here today. Instead of like the 90 that it's been. I will accept the highest quality of timeouts. Yeah, and like, and like I said earlier, I feel like the point of playing decks like this deck in Modern should be to like minimize, minimize, uh, or maximize your nut draws. And like maximizing to go off on turn four seems strange to me because like there's a lot of decks where that's just too slow. Uh, it was just a team tournament. I went four and three, which is about to be expected. We, uh, I went four and three. I would have gone five and two if I would have played a little bit better, which is, you know, five and two is a reasonable record. I think the sister's deck is great. I think it's my favorite deck in Hexus current standard format. I like I like crappy creature toolbox decks, creature combo decks. Uh, we went four and three. Matt did not lose a match playing Grixis Delver, which if you're playing Legacy and you're not playing Grixis Delver, you're not you're not trying to be competitive, really. Um, just, and Matt hasn't played much Legacy, and just watching him body people over and over again throughout the day was just really funny. Um, and then our standard player basically didn't didn't. He, I think he won one match, maybe. I don't remember. He lost a lot. Four color control. I, I honestly haven't played enough with four color control to really know if it's better or worse than Grixis Delver. But the four color control and Delver have have enough overlapping cards that they're almost the same archetype. They're they're very, very close. He played like Owen Turtenwald's list, which was a bad choice. He basically just got his shit pushed in by the mono red deck that ended up winning the Pro Tour all day, which beat Owen in the top four. So like, I'm not surprised that he had a bad matchup against that. I don't think I'm going to play team tournaments anymore. Like, I really like they were kind of neat and novel the first couple of times I played them. But like, I really I like having to prepare for multiple formats is like it really makes it having to having to prepare for multiple formats really makes it not feel like a team format because like I don't know if my teammates made made good decisions or not with their deck choices because like I don't play standard and I couldn't really give relevant feedback on standard and like it feels like it all so many things have to break your way so, so many things have to break right. It always feels like most of the team tournaments I've played, there's always one player, and it's been me sometimes, just like that one player just gets dumpstered over and over again for whatever reason. The, the problem is that, like, it takes a lot of work to be, like, super familiar with all of Magic's formats. So, like, I was able to give Matt a lot of relevant feedback, like, when I wasn't playing or, like, when he needed he needed to talk to someone for a minute. But, like, I couldn't give our standard player relevant feedback. All right. So... I think we just jam this, right? I guess I could just jam another hive mind. Now nah, I'm gonna jam this ballista for three and see what happens. It's like almost certainly baits a counter spell, right? Yeah. 
Oxen, thank you very much for the Twitch Prime support. I do appreciate it. Welcome, welcome. There's a lot of great people making a lot of great stuff on Twitch right now. Thanks for supporting mine this month. I'm gonna play this just to force them to pop this, I think. So I didn't board, if you listen to the words that I said, the boring, I didn't leave in engineered explosives for explicitly killing Onyx like the Pokemon got it. I didn't leave in the engineered explosives for explicitly killing Snapcaster Mages. That was just something that it could do on occasion. The reason to leave an engineered explosives in my deck is because my opponent could potentially have cards like Damping Sphere in their deck that I want to destroy. That's why that card was left in my deck. So I agree with you that killing Snapcaster Mage is not a good reason to leave Engineered Explosives in my deck, but that was not why I left Engineered Explosives in my deck. I left Engineered Explosives in my deck to be able to kill Damping Sphere and any any permanent-based hate cards my opponent might have left in. It is pretty gloomy in the Midwest this morning, isn't it? Man, you know what I really wish we fucking had? Cavern of Souls. I, re I really, I would kill for a motherfucking Cavern of Souls right now. We're dead, right? Because they can fire up. Well, they can't fire up both tarpets. We're dead to a land. We're dead. We're dead to a land. Our deck would look different if it had Cavern of Souls. Our lines would be different. No, we shouldn't transmute before jamming because I'm literally dead if I don't leave this ghost quarter up. I was dead to a land if I didn't leave the ghost quarter up. No, they need a land drop to kill me this turn. Because they, they attack here and then I ghost quarter them. I think we're dead though. I'm feeling pretty dead. Might be a quick-ish Amulet Titan League. Transmute is only sorcery speed. That is correct. Uh, I believe I'm out of things to go get because I only have one explosives and one ballista, both of which I've been through here. We'll double check just in case. Confirmed dead, right? Oh, I guess I get a pact. And pact gets Baloth. Yeah, I guess. Maybe all three of their cards are bad. Yep. Yep. All right. Well, wait, did we win game one? We definitely won game one. Sweet. I would like a do over. I don't think I'm going to change how we sideboard it. I'm going to submit. Yeah, when I'm playing a blue deck, I board in Dispel in this matchup. Dispel basically reads counter target green creature. Packs are very important in this matchup. I am actually, it's funny, I was actually just responding to a message on Twitter, someone asked me about Ascendancy. So people that are interested in seeing the Ascendancy deck and learning more about it, just 
too too many lands and not enough lands simul simultaneously both of those things um i'm gonna be writing a just guy ascendancy primer for gathering magic this week it'll be published on friday on gathering magic if you're one of my if you're one of my subscribers, um, it'll I'll have a rough draft preview posted in the subs discord either tonight or tomorrow night when I finish it. I had fun apprentice, but our record was not very good. Our standard player just got destroyed. So I have one, two, three, four mana right now. That's not enough, right? I think I just bottom, bottom here. I don't think I want either of these cards. So, so I'm gonna say something and people, people are going to, someone's gonna clip this and I'm, they're gonna call me scum. And this is why I don't play competitive magic anymore. So one of the reasons why I play less competitive magic, it is to your advantage as the Jeskai Ascendancy player to not use tokens to represent things, triggers like that on the stack. You should be very clear verbally what you are doing and communicate clearly. But if you are if you're a good player and you're used to playing your deck, your opponent is more likely to make a mistake without the visual representation of what's going on after you've explained it clearly than if the, the think the thing is there. So if you understand how your deck works, you are only helping your opponent by using tokens like that to represent what is going on. By making your opponent expend mental energy for something like that, they lose points in other places while playing the game. Sure. So, and again, like, I, when I, people, you know, if you've heard my rants on rules lawyering and stuff like that, you should take every legal advantage you should get when playing a competitive card game if your goal is to be winning. So, I thought about making tokens like that, but I definitely think it is only to your advantage to not be using something like that. And again, you should clearly explain what is going on, but by not you're not required to have visual representation for things like that. So, when are you planning to stream Hex next? So, Hex and Hearthstone don't make enough money to be considered to be considered work. Um, so I don't really have them built into my schedule. Hex, Hex and Hearthstone streams are just kind of happening whenever I have time to fit them in. So to answer your question, I don't know explicitly the next time when the next hex stream is going to happen. Yeah, I'm pretty sure their deck is only we've the only win conditions we've seen so far are Tar Pit and Snapcast Rage. JMP with the fifteen dollar donation. Sorry, I gotta log into my dashboard here. I'm ill prepared this morning. Legacy four color control with Kess with a possible rant at the end sounds good jmp get some get some experience in with that see how it feels i will i will tweet when i when i do plan to stream hex and i will it obviously the notification will go out on twitch as well so if you follow me on those social medias you won't miss it god they have tech edge too Um, I don't know if I'm going to Indy or not. I kind of wouldn't mind playing the Ascendancy deck again, but like any time that like I'm devoting to magic that I'm not streaming, it's like basically losing money. So I might set a donation goal if people want to send me to Indianapolis to play. I'll probably go do it because I like the deck, but like if people don't want to send me, I'd rather just like spend stay home for the weekend and spend that time streaming. 
I, I played I played the team event last weekend, so I feel like I filled I filled my quota of paper tournaments that I that I'm gonna invest my own money into for the quarter. Cause like as far as content goes, it's way better for the growth of my channel to like stay home and stream all weekend rather than go to a tournament. Plus, like, have you seen the donation queue? It's fucking huge. I think there are 76 decks in there as of this morning. Uh, we went four and three, Gorgia. I went four and three personally. Casual champion with the two month resubscription. Thank you very much and welcome back. I appreciate the continued support. Howdy, Jade Kid. I'm doing well. Happy Monday. Life is swell. I'm very, I'm very lucky. I get to, I get to be excited to go to work in the morning Sunday night. Nope. The donate, the donation queue works under a very simple principle. People, people can either donate the minimum amount and then wait the amount of time that it takes for their deck to make it to the top of the queue. Or you can donate extra dollars and get your deck to the top of the queue automatically. So basically, you can choose whether or not you want to uh, wait with your time or pay to cut the line with your dollars. So the system, the system is very well defined. And if someone thinks that it's going to take too long to wait, they'd rather not donate because they don't want to wait. That's, that's their prerogative. That's true. Sometimes other people pay to cut for you. That is true as well, which is one of the reasons why I have the spreadsheet, right? So like people can can look at that and determine if they want to cut cut for someone else. I just we're, we're I understand we're not zero percent in this game. We're a very low percentage. We're a very very low low percentage. All right, while well, we wait for the third match in this league to pop, I'd just like to thank everyone for hanging out this morning. If you're new, my name is Jeff Hogan. I'm a full-time streamer, memer, content producer here on Twitch. I stream Magic uh, 30 plus hours a week on this channel. We play a ton of Modern, we play some Legacy, we play some Vintage. I also stream games like Hex and Hearthstone on occasion. If you're enjoying my stuff, please consider subscribing to my channel. My subscribers are quite literally the people that keep me employed. They are the reason that I'm able to do this like I do full-time. If you're new to Twitch, subscriptions start at $4.99 a month, and those support me directly. Um, you, you can also, if you're one of the many people in the world who has Amazon Prime, if you link your Amazon account to your Twitch account, you get Twitch Prime included with that for free. And Twitch Prime gives you a free channel subscription to a channel of your choice every single month here on Twitch. It doesn't cost you anything extra. It's included with your Amazon Prime. You can also support my stuff by supporting some of my wonderful sponsors as well. Uh, MTGOTraders.com would love to buy and sell some Magic Online cards with you. And if you use code Hogan PayPal at checkout with them, you'll save 8% on your singles orders there. CoolStuffInc.com buys and sells a lot of cool stuff, including TCG singles. Using promo code Jeff5, you can save 5% on Magic, Pokemon, and Yu-Gi-Oh cards with them. InkedGaming.com would love to help you customize your gaming experience. Using code Jeff12, you can save 12% on custom play mats, mouse pads, binders, and bags there. And of course, myself, and all of our moderators here would like to welcome everyone to Hoaglandia. Please talk to your friendly neighborhood moderator about receiving your complimentary timeout. Uh, at any rate, we are 0-2 in this league. See if we can rally back and become a true 3-2 modern deck. Um, I, I think this is a keep. I, th I think this is a keep. The the opening hands in this deck on on paper, they're they're truly something only a mother could love, I feel. They're a little a little bit awkward at times. Um so I think I'm supposed to keep both of these. I'm pretty sure we top top and draw the amulet this turn. We'll draw the amulet and go like hub amulet and the following turn we can stir. Well, the the stirrings is likely gonna find us a bounce land.
We'll get to Teamer Kiki at the next modern stream, I freaky Kiki. We'll get to it at the start of the next modern stream. Do you like any rogue decks in the current Hearthstone standard? I've actually been playing Token Druid myself, so... What have I been playing? Token Druid... I've been playing Token Druid and, um... What's the meme we've been playing? Shutterwalk. Shutterwalk's a hoot. Shutterwalk's a hoot. It's the other deck I've been playing. So we'd rather have Selesnia Sanctuary here. We'll play this and pick Gemstone back up. Shutterwalk is very expensive. I play a little bit of Tempo Mage still too. Is is Face Mage bad against Token Droid? I don't actually know offhand. I don't think I've played against a lot of Tempo Mage on the ladder recently. I had a Mage quest yesterday at the gym. So I... I had a Mage quest yesterday at the gym and I 3-0'd with Tempo Mage pretty easily. Uh, probably tomorrow, Freaky Kiki. Either tomorrow or Wednesday. I need to look and see where the Legacy decks end up at after today. So I don't want that. I do want that. Drawing Slayer Stronghold's a little awkward. Well, I guess without an amulet, it doesn't really matter. Why is it bad, McCullough? Can't you just like get under them? <clears throat> Joke's on you, opponent. I didn't want those spells anyways. Mm. Nope, just need a webcam. So setting up streaming software is really easy. It is, it is very, if you can edit a Word document, you can probably set up a, set up streaming software. OBS is very, it's all point and click. There's no, there's no coding or anything cryptic. You just add the elements you want to the screen and then drag and resize and position them. I was hoping Bob was going to play on our team, but uh, so far he's being very kind to the opponent. Of course, good lord, the testicles on my opponent are huge. Gorgia, thank you very much for the 14 month resubscription. Welcome back, I appreciate it. All right, so I'm getting Colony Garden plus Bounce Land here. I want Colony Garden to insulate against the Liana the Veil. And I want to bounce land to pick up my Teleria West so I can transmute for another Titan next turn. Please die to your Dark Confidants. Please die to your dark confidants. Nah, I think playing around the third thought sees is kind of silly, burdened one. Come on, Bobby! Bobby! Play for the right team, Bob. I'll give you a signing bonus and everything. Big, big, big signing bonus for joining my team, Bob. Ayo! Come on, Bobby. Come on, Bobby. Let's go. Let's go. All right. All right. So I'm talking about? Yeah. Down to four. Down to four. Mmm. Mmm. Tasty. Tasty. The downside is an opportunity cost. No oh, jeez. Oh jeez. No blocks. Did I, did I not say that loud enough? No blocks. I was gonna say that's the best draw in our deck. 
but uh, we could have transmuted for it, so. So this is a matchup where I know you board out Amulet of Vigor. This is this is definitely an Amulet of Vigor out matchup. The extra threats come in, the walking ballistas come in. Is that it? Is it just like those four? I could see Dismember being okay. I don't think I want Slaughter Pact. I don't think I want Rex Sage. Pact of Negation is kind of bad, right? Is the Hive Mind plan not good? These are actually... These are actually kind of bad here, right? Yeah, Pact pack of Negation is not good in this matchup. I don't think you board against Damping Sphere preemptively. The, the problem is they're just going to grind us out. So I think I just want cards to have one for one interaction. Sounds fine. Again, chat, remember, please be please be mindful of the chat rules. If you want to suggest how to sideboard, please be specific. If, you're, if you want me to bring in a card that I'm not currently deciding on whether or not to bring in, please tell me why I should bring it in. Ideally, you should also suggest a cut for it as well. As someone who's a big fan of never mulliganing against discard decks, the sand is keepable. It's not, not super exciting, but definitely keepable. I think I'd rather play this than this stirrings. Yeah, Rex Rec Sage is a small hedge against Damping Sphere. It's it's better to draw a Rex Sage when they don't have Damping Sphere than it is to draw ancient grudge or nature's claim when they don't when they have damping sphere so yeah it's it it's at least a two on the light gets in the way man they are super aggro i love i love this line from the opponent if they don't have anything better to do here they're like really recognizing that they're the beatdown in this matchup and they need to just kill me asap so like not only just draining me kill me faster but it also allows them to grow their Tarmogoyf by putting a land in the bin. I think, I think the opponent's line here is particularly good. And again, we're going to play this Azusa. And you want to make sure you play your land that doesn't have a trigger first. Because your opponent's going to be able to respond to the trigger by killing your Azusa with a Bolt or Fatal Push. I think I'm bouncing Aether Hub here, so that way if I draw a six drop, I can slam it next turn. Cause like if I bounce the Teleria West back to my hand, both the lands in my hand are tapped lands and I won't be able to play a Titan if I draw it. No blocks. Ah, 
Time to go twist some dabs and cut some hair. <laughs> God bless. God bless. What do we got here, Ponane? I assume Azusa's living because if they could have killed Azusa, they would have done it pre-combat to make their goif larger. Oh no. Oh no, it smells like stone rain. Smells like stone rain. So small, opponent played this game pretty well up until this last turn. Small sequencing mistake there. If they would have full mander mage pre-combat, they would have been able to, they would have been able to uh, hit me for one more point of damage there. And we'll see if that ends up costing them or not. Am I transmuting a Teleria West this turn? I think I am, right? Go get a Summoner's Pact. Doing this proactively like this exposes the Summoner's Pact in my hand to a discard spell where Teleria West isn't, but like it's gonna be a long time before I have nine mana and I'm able to transmute and cast Titan in the same turn. God, we're about to get full Minor Maged again, aren't we? That one, that one's okay. All right, feeling, feeling okay here. Feeling okay here. We're gonna get Colony Garden. Yeah, Titan, Titan gets Colony Garden for sure. Titan was getting Colony Garden regardless, right? Oh geez, do I just get Hornet Queen? Is it better to just get Hornet Queen here? It's like a million times better to just cast Hornet Queen, right? Trigger. Go. Go. Ah, bees. Ah, the bees are coming. The bees are coming. No. It's going to snap this trade. Not close. Why, why do you hate fun opponent? What, what did fun ever do to you that you hate it so much? I think I'm just supposed to let this resolve. Make them choose between Pact and Bal Ballista. Interesting. I feel like they chose wrong there. I feel like they chose wrong there. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, chat. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to kill the Liliana. Just gonna nug her to one. Definitely playing this out for four. So obviously we'll ping her to keep it in check so they can't edict my ballista here. And like, if they drew a removal spell, they'll play removal spell.
You really can't take this hit and go to go to two. Yeah, tra transmute is a sorcery is the reason to do it at sorcery speed. They respond by calling a judge, right? That reminds me of one of my favorite y'all y'all don't understand what your cards do moments. I was playing, God, I think this was like an old school PTQ even. It was, it was a long time ago at the very least. And I look at the table next to me and one player has cast tribal flames during their opponent's end step and their opponent has dispelled tribal flames. And like, in both players' defense, the Tribal Flames was in a different language, but it was still really funny to me that, like, one player had thought it was an instant, and the other player was like, well, oh, we played it as an instant. Obviously, I can dispel this, right? <laughs> it's like, oh, you kids, you kids. All right, let's draw a good one. That tech technically... Technically gives us another draw step. Down to uno mas. Titan. All right. Well, I, um, I feel like, <sighs> We get a game, we get a game three. I, I don't know if it's this build or if we're running bad, but this is, this has been a rough league. Anybody else feel like it's been kind of a rough league? I feel like the last couple times we played Amulet Titan, it has not been this rough. And I don't, I don't know if it's the Lotus Bloom Hive Mind difference or if it's, if it's just us running medium. Most people who play Amulet prefer the Scout list. So this is a variation that, from my understand, is, is less popular than the traditional ones that are currently playing Sakura Tribe Scout, like the build, the build that top aided the Grand Prix. Uh, I mean, this is definitely a keep, right? Yeah, the, the selection of utility lands are also also feel really awkward in this list. Like not only are there no Bajuka Bog, but there's no Cavern of Souls. It is I feel like there's a lot of cards. Okay, so this is this is an interesting moment. Do I take Teleria West so I can just blank Inquisition here? Is that unreasonable? I feel like I'm supposed to just take Teleria West to make their Inquisitions not have text. Cause like engineered explosives might be okay, but like I feel like the I feel like it's close which of these I want anyways, and the fact that this allows me to blank one of their discard spells is really appealing. Yeah. Inquisition me, baby. Damn it. Damn it, Bobby. So if you haven't, I've competitive leagues and friendly leagues, the way they are named, are named in a way to encourage people who feel like they want a more competitive experience to gamble more because the rake or the amount you're risking in gambling when playing a competitive league compared to a friendly league is a lot more. So I don't care about qualifier points. I have no desire to spend a Saturday or a Sunday playing an all day, um, all day mox tournament anyways. So if I only care about playing quality games of magic and I don't care about gambling to the max and I don't care about qualifier points, there's no reason for incentive for me to play 
the competitive leagues. In my experience, which is a sample size, geez, my sample size is pretty big at this point. It's, it's probably four digits worth of matches playing competitive leagues and probably getting close to four digits worth of matches playing friendly leagues. Um, the caliber of players you play against, the number of mistakes that they make that are obvious, and the caliber of the decks that they play are very similar. Like, this league's a great example, right? Like, what have we played against this? We've played against Affinity, we've played against Jund, and what was... I, I'm blanking on what our third matchup was, but, like, at a minimum, two of the three decks we've played against in this league are, like tier decks that are very reasonable blue black control sure okay so that's that's like modern right we played against we played against two very reasonable decks and then two kind of poop decks or one kind of poop deck and like the poop deck beat us to be fair so like you know is it playing get engineered explosives and play and crack it is it worth cashing my lotus bloom in for that next turn next turn i could transmute the telaria west and cast the titan that i get with it it's probably better to just clean their board here it's probably better to just clean but i don't i don't have another telaria west the, the issue isn't hey you have another thing the issue is that i don't have another bomb to get after this So Amulet is a card, I'm very confident in that, very smart Amulet players have told me to do this. The Amulet is a card that's explosive, and against interactive decks like Jund and Jeskai Control, you don't beat them by being explosive, you beat them by grinding them out. Am I supposed to just get Walking Ballista here? How do we feel about Walking Ballista for two? Shoot your Dark Confidant. I kind of like that, because it leaves me a threat. I kind of like that because it leaves me a threat. Apprentice of Bolas with the $20 donation. Hoot, hoot, owling mine, please. It's been too long for the meme. 10 out of 10. We'll get that. Thank you for the support, Apprentice, as always. So this, this does leave... Them with this Tarmogoyf, obviously. But I think that's a worthwhile exchange because it leaves us with a Walking Bliss. And they're kind of low on health here. They're at 12. So, like, if they're pressuring us with this Tarmogoyf, we're killing them on the backswing pretty quickly. This is a Collective Brutality. All right. So, we're taking... Going to get by a 5-6 now. I'm not blocking here because if we draw a Titan, I want this to insulate my thing against uh, Liliana. Well, another thing that's kind of and I and, and I'm gonna prefix this statement with I understand that Sakura Tribe Scout isn't a really isn't an amazing spell, but adding Lotus Bloom to this deck adding another four mana sources to a deck that already is basically playing close to 30 mana sources means you flood out more, right? Like that's that's four more mana sources in a deck that's already prone to flooding. What's going on, Hippity? I'm doing swell. Happy Monday. Happy Monday to everybody out there. Everyone's having a, had a great weekend, having a great start to your week. Hanging out, playing some modern here today. It's unfortunate that our Hornet Queen got discarded. I don't really follow anything E3 related. I'm an I'm an old man. I don't really play traditional video games much anymore. I've played a little bit of Overwatch. I've played some Skyrim, but that game's what six years old at this point. No, I don't play in Grand Prix. They're very expensive. Travel costs are a lot, and uh, and the opportunity cost is a lot. And the Grand Prix itself isn't cheap. It's what, like $70 to play in a Grand Prix or something absurd like that? What's going on, Anironix? Welcome. Good to see you, bud. Look, my four drops smaller than their two drops. God bless. They have two more creatures in bins they can eat with this.
This is the third match. We are currently 0-2 in this league. I think I'm going to just jump block here. I want to preserve my health total at this point. And I have another colony garden in my hand to make another jump blocker. <clears throat> I assume I'm going to lose the bell off here. Another great day of bit farming. Thank you, extras. I appreciate it. Thanks for raining some cupcakes down there. Uh, we're dead on board, right? This is 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I guess if they, they could not have a removal spell and we could jump block. Whoa, that is a lot of bit farming. Thank you, extras. Let me know if you want to bump anything on the queue with those, as always. Uh, the You should check my Twitter. Twitter.com forward slash Jeff Hogan. I tweeted a bunch of stuff um, regarding the tournament over the weekend that I played in. I'm also going to be writing a full... Uh, full deck primer with some notes from the tournament like some interesting decisions in places that like my opponents made mistakes to give me extra percentage points um for gathering magic on friday i think we're pretty dead here the fact that we don't have hornet queen to pick up anymore even if we had hornet queen treetop village kind of trumps that Well, I mean, I don't think this does anything, right? I don't have an amulet, Titan. I don't have an amulet, chat. I don't think this is enough. Yeah, they're gonna enter the battlefield tapped. I could get a bounce land plus a Slayer Stronghold and like pick the Slayer Stronghold up and replay it and haste my Titan, but they're at 12, so eight, eight is not enough. I can get engineered explosives here, but I think we're dead to the Liliana. So I get Bounce Land plus Teleria West, and then we transmute for an explosive, then we can play in Crack Explosives, and then I can Vesuva the Colony Garden for an extra blocker. Yeah, I think that's the line. Yeah, I still have a land drop, so I can Vesuva the Garden and get an extra chump blocker. I use one Lotus Bloom to transmute the Teleria West, and then I use Gemstone plus the other Lotus Bloom to play it for two and crack the Engineered Explosives. So yeah, I'm pretty, pretty confident that that's the line. I'm gonna grab... I'm going to grab this and grab Golgari Rot Farm. So that way Slaughter Pact is live if we draw it. And we're going to we're going to be dead to a few things here, but we're we're going to leave ourselves not dead on board, which is the goal. Give ourselves the best possible chance to win here. So this eats those, and then this. So we're dead to we're dead to bolt. We're dead to fatal push. Um, we're not dead to terminate, right? Which is nice. And then we get some redraws here, which is decent. Use the Lotus Bloom, so that's nice. Another thing that's curious about this build of this deck is that a lot of these builds have like a bunch of Baloths in the board, or they have like copies of Tireless Tracker, stuff like that. Things that allow them to um, generate or have extra threat density post board in matchups like this.
can candy mans, yep. Yep. Oh man. Well that's a huge fucking reason to not get Slayer Stronghold. Or to not get a Gregory Rat Farm, because I can't Slayer Stronghold my thing now. If I so I have how much mana here? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I can I can attack with this, get bounce land plus a Teleria West, and then put another Titan into play here. Yeah, we get to attack and make another Titan. I'm going to grab a white source at this point just so I can get set up to use this layer stronghold next turn. We are going to be dead to a removal spell here, which sucks. Oh yeah, I haven't made a land drop yet either. So we're actually not dead to that, right? Because this this Titan is going to get a bounce land plus a radiant fountain. So we can pick colony, colony garden back up here. So we'll grab Radiant Fountain uh, Boros Garrison here. And I think we're better off making an extra blocker rather than gaining two more health here. I think we might have, I don't want to like jinx it here, but I, th I think we might have pulled this one out. <laughs> I think... I think we might be on our on the road to redemption chat. We might be running it back towards the three two. This is a long deck to play. We're three matches in and we've been going for an hour forty five. Please don't edict me. How will I ever win the game now, opponent? Oh no. Wait, what? Uh sure. Uh, attack you with cards that trample. Attack you with cards that trample. That, was, that last one was a sweet game of magic. A lot of, a lot of little intricacies there. And that's why I like toolbox decks. There's a lot of little things that you can do and like, a lot of a lot of decision trees that end up in a lot of a lot of different places. I will put my tier three sub towards the Ollie Mine deck that was just donated for time to show these kids what a meme looks like. Sounds excellent. And thanks again for re-upping at that level, Weebar Me. This seems like not super exciting, but I think it's a keep. Burn, baby, burn. This, oh, nope. Oh, no. Oh, no, not Arbor Elf. Don't, don't play a Utopia Sprawl. No, stop it. Stop it. Was it just search for tomorrow? Whew, whew. 
I got they played they played a snow covered forest and I got Ponza vibes there for a minute. It was a little it was a little concerned, chat. It was a little concerned. I think this deck that we're playing right now is now is is solidly solidly tier two. I think this, I think it's tier playable. That's, I, I, I hate arguing about tier one and tier two in modern because there's so many decks that are just like reasonable choices. So like tier playable is the verbiage that we've taken towards using on this stream. And I definitely think this deck falls into tier playable. The tiers are all made up, yep. Am I gonna wear the owl suit for the Howling Mine deck that just got bumped? Probably not. That's a lot of work. And it's summer. It's hot out. Ooh. 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 I, fo I found a piece of candy, chat. I found a piece of candy. Hmm. Oh, we bought, we bought the suit. Thank you. There is an owl suit in my closet. We never took a family owl picture. We're probably gonna do that for Halloween. We're all we're all gonna be owls for Halloween, the entire Hogland family. I'm gonna bottom that at this point. Doesn't seem like something I really want. So this is one of the things that's a little bit awkward about this deck is that we kind of combo next turn. Nope, never mind. I'm a liar. Main deck engineered explosives. That's very interesting. That's very interesting. Some good technology there. Oh, lordy. All right, well, we're, uh, we're dead to escape shift next turn. We're dead to escape shift. Uh, do I transmute this for anything useful? I don't think so. I'm gonna sit down while we think. This league's been going on for too long. I need to sit down. I can play Titan. How do I play Titan? I can do, oh, I can play, yeah, we can play it with the land drops. Yeah, so we can play this, make a mana, play this, bounce this, play this. Yeah, that, that's definitely the line. All right, bro, don't, don't escape shift me. I, gu I guess we could have gotten, I guess we could have gotten a uh, Pact of Negation there. Yeah, Pact of Negation was probably the line. Four health doesn't matter. They have Prismatic Omen in play. Hey, Jeff, probably won't be able to watch my Jessica Agro League live. Just wanted to remind you, you can feel free to make any changes that you want. Maybe. I'm actually kind of excited to see the Mantine Trumpet. They seem kind of sweet. Yeah, they get, they just get to get four Valakuts here, so health is actually irrelevant. Yeah, like any any land land titan or landscape shift is very lethal here. Yeah, that's true. We definitely lock it up if we if they don't have it this turn. Have any of you out there ever met? Oh jeez, oh jeez, that land just came into play tapped. 
That that land just came into play tapped, chat. It was, like, it was excited about that tapped land. This guy. This guy right here. Are they dead? They're dead, right? I have, do I have nine mana? I think I have nine mana, right? Yeah. Yeah, buddy. All right, well, we got to hive mind a nerd. I don't know if the slaughter pact is bad, actually, because they can make black mana. We just like go get another summoners packed, right? And just like double summoners pack them. Yeah, pack of negation is fine if you do it right. It, it they just they only have eight man. They only have seven mana though. So like, This does get got guys by spirit guy, doesn't it? You're right. Huh. This does get got by spirit guide. Man, they're about to spirit guide the shit out of us, aren't they? Oh, you know what? They could also Breach Titan into play and kill us. We, Well, I guess we weren't beating Breach Titan anyways, right? Breach Titan was going to be lethal regardless. So this is a Swan Song matchup for sure. Can trim at least one engineer explosive. I've seen a lot of these decks have damping sphere in their sideboard now, so I probably want to leave in one EE. And yeah, it's probably better just have Rex Sage rather than EE. Ghost Quarter is fine, obviously. Sounds good, Andre. Will do. I appreciate the support. Is is the claim that not? I feel like every time people see, every time people see Prismatic Omen, they like jump and want to put like thirteen hundred ways to kill Prismatic Omen in their deck. And like usually, these decks only have one to two Prismatic Omens, if if that. Yeah, don't don't overboard. I think claim is too narrow too. I think just bringing in the one Rex Sage is fine. I could cut another land. Going going down to twenty seven lands is probably reasonable. I think I like all of these spells. I like all the spells in my deck right now. Do I trim Colony Garden or Crumbling Vestige? Probably Vestige. Really, you think Radiance better than Colony? The 
The go-to cut is best stage. Yeah, that seems fine. <laughs> Just wanted more green sources, but I'll definitely listen to people smarter than me. I think, I think it's pretty marginal either way. I think the extra health is pretty unlikely to matter. This, the fucking mute button on this microphone, man. Sorry, I know it's early, but I didn't eat breakfast, so I'm snacking. So your your micro your audio is not broken. I muted myself intentionally there. Oh, I should have just played the gemstone mine, right? Fuck, this is an explosives. Was I supposed to wait to play the other amulet out? No, because I wouldn't have been able to tighten this turn. All right, we're a turn behind because I didn't pack for Aziza last turn, but yeah. This definitely should have happened last turn. And this, because I'm a turn late, it doesn't accomplish much because now I have to pay for pack next turn, so I'm still two turns off of Titan. It's like I would be tightening this turn if I would have Azusa on three. That would be a good draw, except I don't have double blue because I can't tighten this turn. It does let us hype my next turn. I think being a turn turn slow here means we're dead now. Let's 
Summoner's Pact or Amulet or Ancient Stirrings, they're all lethal here, right? Because all of those, all of those let me cast this Pact of Negation and kill them with Hive Mind. You can always find all of my videos on my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Jeff Hoagland, in case you missed anything live. What's the most likely way to live through this turn? This up. Uh... Oh, because I already had the bounce land. Yep. I don't think the two health is likely to matter. We could have gotten Ghost Quarter 2. Yeah, the, the not not pacting for Azusa on 3 costs us the game. I, uh, I'm not used to thinking about that line because it's just like it feels weird to pact with only to pact with only um, three mana up, but the Azusa is gonna let you generate more mana, so it makes sense. Yeah, this technically isn't lethal. Now the two lives are relevant. They're hitting us in increments of six. There's a lot of things that kill us here. Any two mana ramp spell, any mountain from their hand. So I'm I'm about to blow your fucking mind, Toolboxer. If you open another tab in your web browser, you can listen to music while you watch the stream simultaneously. It's really it's a really weird idea, but your computer can run two applications at the same time. So if you if you would like if you would like music on while while you watch the stream, your computer can do that. Even my cell phone is upstairs. Even my cell phone can play music while I watch a Twitch stream.
it's it's not even about just that YouTube would mute me. It's that it's it's morally wrong to take other people's content that you don't have permission to fucking take and use it to make your content. It's against the TOS because it's against the law in some places, and it's very morally gray at the very least. If you want to argue it's not morally wrong, it's at the very least gray. It's at the very least gray. I do my best to talk about what we're doing at all times while we're doing it, to like have minimal amounts of dead time. I wouldn't download a beer. I like gray Jedis. Well, I mean, am I supposed to play this out? Yeah, if I hit a bounce land next turn, I get to tighten them, so I should totally just play this out. I, I can put my headphones on right now and listen to music while I'm streaming because I because I understand how my computer works. So so if a streamer tells you that the reason why they play music is because they want to listen to music while they're stream, they're either lazy or stupid if they don't know how to set it up so they could listen to music without piping it into the stream. Also, like I don't that I don't have to force you to listen to I don't have to force you to listen to my choice of music, right? Like, not everybody out there wants to listen to Blue October and Paramore while they watch me play music. Oh, that's true, Edgar. That's true, because there's Boros. I wanted to play the Ghost Quarter like, represent something, but you're right. It's just silly. It's just silly. You should play to the Boros Garrison out. Here's here's the thing, Sunko. This is why that that is horseshit. If a band was okay with being paid in exposure for their music, they would license their fucking music in a way that lets you play it for free on Twitch. If they were okay with getting paid in just exposure, they would say, "Hey, I'm going to license my music that allows people to use it to give me exposure." No, I don't have another forest in my deck. This build only has two forests in it, so I definitely should play the for the the forest out there. This this build is really loose, Edgar. I agree. I am not I'm not a fan of a lot of the small decisions. I am no by no means an amulet titan expert. I will not profess to be an amulet titan expert. Um, but I, a lot of the little details, I don't, I don't know how I feel about the Lotus Blooms and the Hive Mind package like that. I definitely haven't played enough with to know, but like the lack of Cavern, the lack of Bajuka Bog, the lack of, the lack of more forests all feels, feels kind of awkward to me. Like, as someone who, like, makes stuff for a living, I don't, I would be kind of upset and annoyed if someone took my content and used it constantly to supplement their own, which is what people basically do by playing music on their streams. They're taking content that they're not supposed to be using in their content and using it to make money. This comes off next turn, right? Got one more turn on here. We have two basic lands. We do we do get to tighten them next turn. We do we do get to tighten them next turn. Just realized my sub has lapsed, silly me. Stupid ads. Happy three months. Thank you for the three month three subscription, Hogland. Welcome back. I appreciate it. Wizards of the Coast, and this is this in what way is it different? Like, I'm not sure if you're trolling or stupid. 
Like, Wizards of the Coast explicitly gives you permission to stream Magic the Gathering online. It is explicitly in the end user license agreement that you're allowed to stream Magic online. It is, it is ex explicitly in the rules. As Whereas, like, Muse Music is licensed in a way that you're explicitly not allowed to broadcast it. No one has ever read a license agreement. I have. I have. Plus one for making me queue up an old Blue October albums on iTunes. That was my wife's favorite band when we were dating. We went to a bunch of Blue October concerts. My favorite license agreement is the two clause BSD license because it says take my stuff and go do whatever you want with it. Just don't put my name on it. We do, we do have the Lotus Blooms here. The Lotus Blooms are going to do some stuff. Like I said, I'm not 100% sold. Uh, I don't like the configuration of lands that this deck has, but I do. The Lotus Blooms have been kind of kind of okay. We're going to go get some stuff here. Well, on the second one, we're going to go get Boros Garrison Slayer Stronghold here and attack them. It's just sort short of selling pirated music for profit. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then there's the streamers that do that. And there's the the people that literally sell sell song requests and use their stream as a jukebox. It's just like, ugh, ugh. All right, so this is going to be oh, I fucked up how I tap my lands here, right? I don't think it matters. But I definitely should have. I don't think it's going to bite us. It does matter. I don't think it's going to bite us. I should have tapped this ghost quarter as opposed to this gemstone mine, because now when I get Simic Growth Chamber plus Teleria West, um, I would be able to transmute this Teleria West this turn if I would have left gemstone mine untapped. Hey, Trudon, thanks for the host. Welcome to folks from over from Trudon's channel. We're hanging out playing some modern today. So yeah, so if I would have, if I would have tapped this instead of this, I could have transmuted this in Impact of Negation up here. No, chat, tra transmute's a sorcery, chat. Trans transmute being a sorcery is like summoner's pact only getting green creatures. It's one of those things that nobody, nobody in Twitch knows how it works. Actually, uh, G Giggler, Lucas, playing Spotify with the advertisements on your stream is not okay. That's not okay. It's not allowed. The license that you're using for Spotify to play that music with those ads is for personal use only. It's for personal use only. I could go quarter myself, but I don't have a basic island. Magic Applegate, thank you for the two-month tier two sub resubscription. I appreciate that. Let me know which deck in the queue you'd like to bump up this month. As a special reminder, my tier two and tier three subs get a little bit extra control over how the queue works. It's it's not it's not preference. It's oh no oh no there's friendly fire. Somebody unbanned Squirrel Party. Sorry Squirrel Party, that was friendly fire. It's not preference. It's it's literally. It's literally against the rules. It's liter and in some and in some places it's breaking the law. In in some places it's breaking the law. Um, but it's definitely if you've ever opened a streamer's past archives, and their streams are muted, they've broken their Twitch partner agreement. The reason why their streams are muted is because they're streaming music that they don't have permission to stream. 
Uh, this is lethal, right? I do this, I go get double strike land plus the Suva and they die. Sorry about the friendly fire squirrel. This is 16 and they are at 13 or 14 basically. All right, so punted game two there, but we are well on the track towards redemption here, chat. Get our get our three two. Be a real modern deck. I'd like to enter as Boros Garrison. I'd like to untap Stiff. I get all my legal advice from Twitch chat. <laughs> No, no banless modern seems really dry. Sultai Tez sounds great, Magic Applegate. Thanks for the support as always. All right, all right, we're two and two. Well, we're waiting for the third match to pop. I'd just like to thank everyone for hanging out. Hope everyone had a great weekend, it's having a great Monday, great start to your week. My name is Jeff Hoagland. I stream full time here on Twitch. I'm memeing 30 plus hours a week. If you enjoy my stuff, please consider subscribing to my channel or at the very least checking out some of our wonderful sponsors. Cardsteer.com would love to help you turn some of your magic cards into other cards or cash direct with other players. There's no haggling. They just take a 1% fee off the top. Mac Weldon provides premium men's clothing using code Jeff Hoagland at bit.ly forward slash Google clothes. You can save 20% on your first order of premium shirts, polos, underwear, socks, shorts, all sorts of great stuff there. And of course, this stream wouldn't be possible without viewers like Anironix, Justin Nivik, and all y'all out there. Thanks everyone for watching. If you can't subscribe at the very least, if you're new, make sure you hit that follow button. Following the stream doesn't cost you anything and it'll let you know when I go live and with what. Uh... It seems like not amazing, but it's fine, right? Just like turn three Azusa, play some extra lands, maybe turn four Titan. It's going to be a little slow against some of the linear decks in the format, but we've got draws to make this even faster. You would maul this on the draw on the scout version, but we keep this here. Oh no, oh no, there's a storm of brew in chat. Thank you for not subjecting me to your musical taste. DMS5J, thank you for the five month resubscription. And if you, if you want to listen to the shitty music that I like to listen to legally, if you want a full Hogland experience, there's my Pandora station. Go ahead and click that and open it in another browser tab behind you, and it would be just like if I was playing music on the stream for you. Those are those are the songs that would come up. A little bit of Eminem, a little bit of Paramore, a little bit of Christian rock. Good, good spread of stuff on that station. To, to quote my good friend Mike Kletz, if... If this is all of the music a 16-year-old that didn't get asked to prom would listen to, and it's it's probably the truth. Uh, Skillet, Rel I don't know if Skillet qualifies as Christian Rock off and actually, like Reliant K, there's a couple others as well. I didn't go to high school, so I did not go to prom because high school seemed like a waste of time. Uh, the magic tournament I played was only on Saturday. It's a one day event. Yeah, yeah, a lot of a lot of colleges will let you start at 16 if you can pass the placement tests. What am I supposed to do here? Good chance we're dead next turn, right? High school is like tax-funded daycare for troubled teens. 
<laughs> Look, as someone who's currently paying for daycare for a three and four year old, I'm looking forward to tax funded daycare for when they're in grade school. Uh, am I supposed to hold this sanctuary or am I supposed to play it out here? I don't actually know the answer to that. What am I, am I supposed to hold the sanctuary here? All right, I'm just gonna sheepishly put this back in my hand. Just gonna let you know it's there, opponent, your move. Good play. <laughs> That's exactly what I was doing. 13 months of rants. What more can I ask for? Rabner, thanks for the 13 month resubscription. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. We want to hold. We're actually going to show you a good example of why why we're going to hold it. So. Now, even though they killed my Azusa, I have three land drops this turn with the Azusa. So I'm gonna get to play this bounce land three. Azusa plus amulet plus bounce land is basically a ritual. So we're gonna untap it, float mana, bounce the bounce land. Then we're gonna play it again, untap it, float mana, bounce the bounce land. So we're gonna jump up to six mana this turn. And if I would have put this, left this in play, I wouldn't have been able to play a Titan this turn, but now I can. And it's fucking great. I'm gonna bounce the gemstone mine here on this last trigger. Oh, I could have, I could have hive minded, huh? No, they could pay for hive mind with manamorphos. They could pay for hive mind with manamorphos, so I should not hive mine there. Oh yeah, you're right, I couldn't hive mine, and I'm dumb. Edgar's right, I'm dumb. Edgar's so smart. I'm just the monkey on the keyboard here, chat. If you wanna learn how to play Amulet Titan, you should listen to the things Edgar says. All right, so let's smash with this. This is definitely getting uh, blue bounce land plus T-West here. And then hopefully we don't die next turn. If I had a Bajuka Bog here, I'd probably get that. But I don't have a Bajuka Bog, so obviously we're not. You're so, you're so far away, Pact of Negation. You would have kept Gemstone in play, not attacked, and gotten Blue Titan, Blue Pact. That's interesting. Yeah, that's probably right, because we're probably dead next turn, right? Good chance we're dead next turn. And, like, if I untap with Titan, they're dead anyways, even without this attack, probably. So, yeah, I should have gotten blue packed. Please be a cantrip, 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 please be a cantrip. Manamorphose, 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 Manamorphose. Yay! Please cantrip instead of killing me. Yay! Please cantrip, yay, cantrips mean we're less likely. We're not guaranteed not dead, but we're, we're currently less likely to be dead. Oh man, oh man. I liked being alive, chat. I was a f I was a fan of being alive. This could be grape shot kill kill primeval titan. That's true. It's passed in flames. Gift sun given. Huh. This is Ritual, Ritual, Mana Morphos, Noxious Revival. Yeah, we might, we might not be dead here. They have one card. 
If they had another ritual, they probably would have played it already, right? I feel like they would have played it already. I just ditch both rituals here, right? And then hopefully they're planning to can trip into a ritual with this Manamorphose. If they have another ritual in their hand, we're just mystically dead here. You think we're supposed to give him Rit Pass in Flame? I guess Rit Past in Flame doesn't give them a redraw, and it only leaves them at exactly three mana. No, I couldn't have gotten packed with T West post combat, but I could have just not attacked with the Primeval Titan and gotten a packed pre combat, which was Edgar's line. Look at that! See, Edgar, I didn't need to play well. I'm very lucky. Have you, have you considered being luckier? It's very good. This is a slaughter packed matchup. Feels like a slaughter packed matchup. Feels like a slaughter packed matchup. Probably dismember too. Am I right in thinking I want all six of these cards? What do we think? What do we think? I think I'm trimming at least one explosives. Edgar's used to hard. Edgar's used to his opponents having it. It's not. It's not representative of what happens on this stream. This. This is a no justice stream. I have three cards I need to trim here. Yeah, is the hive mind package not good enough? Because they have rituals and shit too. I mean, the Colony Garden's not good, but I don't think I can go below 26 lands. Is the Crumbling Vestige better? Probably. We're two and two, Boneless. This build is weird. I don't know how I feel about the Lotus Bloom, but the lands this deck is playing definitely feel awkward. There should be a Cavern and a Bog in this deck. I think there should be a Cavern of Bog in this deck. The Scry lands have actually been kind of good. But the lack of Cavern and lack of Bog seems bad. Nah, usually the Storm deck doesn't kill you for exact seas. Usually they have plenty of extra. Hive Mind's good against control decks, I'd imagine. Yeah, I don't have interaction and the hand doesn't really do anything. Sand also doesn't do anything. This hand kinda does stuff at some point, maybe. Yeah, no Rurkthar is sad too. I'm a big fan of the big angry green guy. Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty unlikely. I'm like, that wasn't more an Xaxi's grape shot so much so it was the goblins got you more than anything. No, the no cavern is a conscious decision in this deck list, as far as I understand. Show me a bounce land. Show me a bounce land. Wow. That, uh, those are certainly cards that are registered in our deck. Woof. I have no idea what the motivation is. It's not my deck list. This is a viewer submitted deck list like most of the decks that we play here on stream. Am I dead? Uh, 
Not dead yet. I like not being dead. That's exciting. Not being dead is one of my favorite, my favorite state of beings. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I doubt we get two more turns as well. And I'm doing well. Life is well. Had a good time this weekend in Chicago, not only playing magic, but spending time with the family. The kids love visiting with the grandparents. That was a good time. Yeah, the, the Temple of Mysteries are interesting. Edgar, are you still here? Why did why did Amulet Titan in general move away from move away from the temples. The temples have felt pretty reasonable. I'm sure you you have more insight on like the conventional wisdom of why they moved away from that than anything. You just want more basic forests? Like, do the basic forests actually allow you to win that many more games against, against Blood Moon? Field of Rune. Field of Rune makes sense. Okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, because the more base... I don't think the more basics really let you beat Blood Moon, right? But, like, I definitely would believe that more basics is really good against Field of Rune. Incorporate more turn... Turn one green turns. Okay, yeah, that makes sense, too, because you just want to have... You want to have your thing on one more often? I think I'm supposed to just take the Grawl Turf here. Just like work on guaranteeing my land drops. Yeah, the Field of Rune is just like subtly one of the better cards in Modern, right? Oh no, chat, what if they play Damping Sphere and turn off our Grawl Turf? <laughs> What if they damping sphere us, chat? How will we ever recover? Yeah, I'm in for that. We get to Titan next turn and then play that as a uh, as disruption. They don't have another land. Well, that. They're pretty fucking dead here. The fact that I have Boros Garrison in my in my hand kind of sucks. So. I don't have an amulet either. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I don't have an amulet. I'm so dumb. Shh. shh. I got. I got there eventually, chat. Yeah. Imagine if we had a Rorkthar here. No Rorkthar. Yeah. I. I would. I would really want to test Lotus Blooms more. And I'm sure Edgar's played with this version a bunch, and he might be right. But if you wanted to test this version, I think not having a lot of the bullets that these decks traditionally have is bad. I think it's pretty unlikely that we get Blood Moon. Storm Storm doesn't play Blood Moon. They're, they're not in the fetch land mana base. I'm going to get Growth Chamber T West here, I think. And they have to win through... I also have Pact of Negation up here. So, like, on the off chance they're playing a weird build, I can just Pact of Negation them. Q 
Keep on dish jockey kailed with the with the two month three subscription. Thank you very much and welcome back. I appreciate the continued support. Oh wait, I cast summoners packed. I shouldn't pack of negation. Shh. Hush, hush. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. God, God bless you, Twitch chat. I take back. I take back some of the bad things I've said about you here today. I take back some of the bad things. You're supposed to let him do it. But I could have saved my Titan. Now my Titan had to die. Didn't, didn't we want to throw ourselves on our own sword for our Titan? Don't you love your Titans, chat? Don't you love your Titans? I love my Titans. Ooh, Ooh speaking of Titans, my Titans love me. Man, could you imagine if we would have had Rourke Thar instead of that other Titan? We'd have just been able to, like, give him the business. Good old Squadron Titan, right? Give him the old squawks. You know, no cavern feels pretty rancid. A thump dog with the brand new Twitch Prime support. There's a lot of great people making a lot of great stuff on Twitch right now. Thanks for supporting mine this month with your Prime. Welcome. I feel, wow, we didn't get remanded. I was like, I feel like we're just getting remanded again here. At this point, I'm going to get Slayer Stronghold plus Teleria West here. So that way future Titans can have haste. No, they'd be at two. Thar does six damage. So I'm going to crypt them in response here because I don't want them to draw a card and I'd like to get rid of the things in their discard pile already. So I think that crypting them in response there is. They're at 18 because they shocked. They were at 20. So hopefully this Pact of Negation means we don't die. And we can kill them next turn. Are they double grape? They might be double grape shotting my Titan. Yeah, links are enabled, Edgar. Magic, relevant magic related links are always fine. Oh yeah. Give it to me, Titan. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Give it to the Titan. All the girlies say he's pretty fly for a giant guy. Do, 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 do. Yep, if we had a bajuka bog here, it would be great. But we don't have a bajuka bug, because that's not in our deck list. Yay! We battled back to the 3-2. Um, so, 0-2 oh, into 3-2, and the two and a half hour league. God, this deck is a slog. There's so many little choices. Um, 
I, I think I personally would need to play more with Lotus Bloom and Hive Mind to determine whether or not I liked them in this specific deck list or not, this archetype. Um, I feel like I'm pretty confident in saying, though, that not playing the extra toolbox cards that are valuable in a lot of different places in Modern is silly in this deck list. I think while I think Lotus Bloom and Hive Mind might be worth testing more, I think you should be playing a Bajuka Bog, a Cavern of Souls, and a uh, Rurik Thar at a minimum. So I think I think at a minimum those three toolbox cards should be in this deck. Um, like I said, the rest of the details I would definitely need more more practice and more reps to know for sure if these are good in a variety of matchups versus the cards other people traditionally play, but not not having the toolbox pieces seems rather erroneous. God bless you, Gilgler. All right.